is the scarcest asset? That's a real question. What do you think is the scarcest, the most scarce asset? Huh? People, we've got seven billion people. Huh? Now, I like, I like uh, some of the wisdom in this room already. Many would assume that it's water or food. A lot of talk about shortages of food and fuel and etc. But uh, the scarcest asset, obviously, is time. And economics doesn't talk about this, so I think the Bible talks about it, so I'm going to start with this. It's hard to measure the scarcity of time because we don't know when you're going to die. That's the problem. And the Bible talks about that, that you don't know when you're going to die, and I don't know when I'm going to die. You know, I mean, we're, if we're walking very close to God, we believe God can tell us. And God would try to tell us. All right? But uh, a wise person must choose how to allocate scarce time with alternative uses. Ephesians 5, verse 16, encourages us to do this and recognizes the scarcity of time. The Holy Spirit told us through Paul, the apostle, redeeming the time because the days are evil. It's a command. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. So important, we talk for two hours about this one verse. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. The usage, the language of this is extremely important because the word redeem is used only for one other purpose. God redeems man. Imagine that. What does God do to sinners? He redeems man. God redeems man. Then man is told to redeem time. We're making a pretty tall parallel that God's action towards sinners and the sacrifice He made to save them is the comparison for what man is supposed to do with time. An interesting choice of word. Redeem the time because the days are evil. You can use your restricted time on earth to do many things. You can spend endless hours surfing the internet and playing video games. You can be with people. You can do a task and I'm sure many, many other things. But out of those three, what do you think would be a good use of time? Yeah? Should be clear. Let me quote Dr. Mike Murdoch. He said, in economic terms, he said, pay any price to be in the presence of extraordinary people. Pay any price to be in the presence of extraordinary people. There are people who have traveled for hundreds, even thousands of miles to come to church. That's extraordinary, isn't it? They've paid a price to come and fellowship and worship and learn the Word of God. That's amazing. That, that, is, that's, that shows such wisdom. You've been motivated by something that is from another spiritual dimension. The wisdom of God has brought you here. Now, Mike Murdoch was talking about his own dad in this case. Think about extraordinary people in your life. How much time, how much scarce time do you allocate to be with them? If given a choice between, well, I could, you know, pursue this entertainment versus I could spend time with this extraordinary person. It's amazing to me how many unwise decisions are made. You have to make a trade-off. That's economics. You're going to have to give up one thing for another thing. I think some of you know what I mean. Others of you have no idea what I'm talking about. It's okay. Keep going. The Holy Spirit will touch you. Psalm verse uh, 12, chapter 90. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Talking about scarce time. Our God can operate in unlimited abundance and also live with constraints. He's the only one. Name me a God out of all the religions in the world that has not only unlimited abundance, but also has chosen to live in the constraints of a human body like Jesus Christ. 
to enter, to leave eternity and enter the constraints of time. Our God understands the whole spectrum. He's the only one. Jesus was constrained not only in a human body, but with only 33 years to live. How did he spend it? How did Jesus allocate limited time with alternative uses? Jesus accomplished more in three years than all human effort put together in the past 6,000 years. What a hero. What a wise man. What an economist. Number one, no one matches the accomplishment of Jesus, and he did it in three years. Is it possible to redeem the time? Is it possible to say from today onwards, I'm going to make better decisions about my time? And if you just had three more years to live, you could have a huge impact for Jesus Christ. Is it possible? Yeah. But how did he spend his time? He woke up early before sunrise to go and pray. Hmm. Hmm. Decision, decisions. Economic decisions. They are. 